Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to write a simple WebSocket application using Spring Boot and Stomp.js. WebSocket is a transport layer for asynchronous communication between client and server. And today I'm going to show you how to create a simple messaging system like Telegram or other communication systems, okay? And what I'm going to create first is just a simple Spring Boot project with only one dependency, WebSocket. Let's just go to Spring Starter, okay, and select one dependency, WebSocket. Just change some project metadata, com.java master. Let's name it uh, web web socket project. Okay, and let's change its description to messaging system. And I'll change the package name to just com Java master. Click generate. And here we have our web socket project. Let's just unzip it. Our folder extract close and that's it. Now we have simple Spring Boot project. Let's open it. Open simple web socket project. Looks like it's our project. Open as project in new window. Okay. And what we have here is just an empty Spring Boot project with uh, one WebSocket dependency. Let's check and make sure we did everything correct. Yep. And let's start uh, from Java code first. Because you know our messaging system will have a front-end part and back-end part. And to say you the truth, uh, the back-end part would be the easiest one. Okay, let's create a new package. What do we have here? A new package. Uh, let's call it configuration. And create WebSocket configuration. Java class. WebSocket configuration and this configuration would implement a WebSocket message broker configurer WebSocket message broker configurer which is a model. and to show Spring Boot that this class is configuration we just make annotation configuration and to enable WebSocket message broker we just and past, uh, enable WebSocket mes message broker annotation here. And WebSocket message broker configurer has some default methods which I'm gonna mm, to override. Okay, override methods. And I need register stomp endpoints and configure message broker. Configure message broker. Okay. Here we are. And these methods allows you to configure your stomp endpoints and to configure your message brokers to in order to serve uh, incoming messages to your server. Okay, and just let's add registry, registry, add endpoint. Mm, let's call uh, this endpoint if we if we have chat system. Let's call it chat. Okay, and let's set allowed origins to all clients and let's just save it with socks.js and in configure message broker method we just um, setting application destination prefixes and enabling web uh, uh, simple uh, simple broker registry enable um, set application prefixes set application destination prefixes let's it would be app and a 
enable simple broker uh, to the topic topic and that's actually uh, all about configuration um, enable a simple uh, enable simple uh, broker is enables a simple memory based message broker to carry messages back to the client on destination prefixes which we send as topic okay and uh, actually that's all our configuration according uh, our uh, web sockets let's just um, write some logic and first of all we need uh, some model method which we would throw through the back end to the front end and from the front end to the back end okay let's just create new package let's call it model and create just simple java class and let's call it message model not so original but we just training to write uh, good code model okay and let us message model would have some fields message and private string and let's call it for example from login login and let's generate getters and setters get and setter and let's generate two string method just to, to see uh, output in our console two string method okay and that's it we don't need it anymore and in order to um, as we have uh, our chat application we uh, we need users in our chat application and to store users it, it's better to use uh, some like some storage like uh, relational databases or non-relational but in this tutorial to make it more uh, more short uh, i just create some I, i'll store my users in, in just in some list or set okay but you don't do it okay it's just for tutorial purposes okay let's just create some package let's call it storage and create for example user storage uh, actually i'm gonna save only one field user storage i i will just save users login and let's just create a single top class static static private static users storage instance g in stance uh, and let's make this construct private users user storage okay and public static synchronized let's make it synchronized um users storage get instance okay just simple singleton method if instance is now then we create new instance new user storage and return instance okay and let's just create our user storage let's let's make it a set private set string uh, our set will uh, con uh, will have just a um, set of users logins users and users equals new hash set and I just create some uh, setter and getter method set string da, uh, get users okay just to return users and public void set user because we need only one user string uh, for example um, user name 
and let's check uh, we would communicate uh, with users by their username and we need that username to be unique because uh, our message could be uh, sent to if in our system uh, two users for example would have the same username um, the message uh, would uh, send them both but we need uh, our message to be sent only for one user in one time to so we need um, our user usernames should be unique for every user and let's just check the user uh, username to be unique if um, users contains username then it's uh, let's just throw an exception but it's better to uh, to create custom exception just to distinguish this exception but i, I I want to make this tutorial short and uh, don't want to mm, implement a lot of classes, you know, user already exists, ex uh, sorry, with login and well, let's just not login with username. We agreed that our users would have a username and if, okay, just users at username. That's how we just implemented our storage, but I repeat myself. If you are building a real system, not uh, for the tutorial purposes, it's better to save your users in some storage. Okay, let's close this class. And next thing we're gonna build is our controller to control our messages and users. Let's call our package controller and create class. Let's call it um, message controller. And this controller, let's call it this controller. This controller uh, would uh, handle incoming messages and send them to the users. Okay. Uh, the main uh, logic about our websockets would be in this controller. Uh, let's just uh, create our method public void send message. This method would send message from one user to another. To make this met method work as well, we need annotation message mapping and we need to uh, say uh, from which um, from which URL we would receive those methods and from which URL we would send those methods. And method message mapping just maps URL uh, which you would from which you uh, receive uh, the incoming messages. It's like controller method, but instead of get and post, you just uh, enter the message mapping. And as we made our endpoint, registry endpoint as chat, so we'll start as chat. And in destination prefixes, we would just receive um, the destination user uh, who should receive the message, okay? And destination variable, just um, string. Two. And that's how uh, you can uh, bundle uh, this variable from the URL to the uh, variable in your method. Okay. And what we receive uh, else, it's just our message, message model, model, message. And that's it. And let's let's just system out something in console to for for debugging purposes, but uh, please don't leave uh, sys out uh, messages when you uh, build uh, real app applications. It's better to use login systems uh, to log your messages. But uh, I just use sys out um, handling, for example, uh, send message is message plus. And 
to hold. Okay, and let's check uh, if user is exist in our uh, storage. Okay, boolean is exists equals users storage get instance get users contains two and if user exists so we can um, send him a message if exists then and if user doesn't exist we just do nothing it's bad practice it's better to throw some exception to the client but we just uh, do nothing if user doesn't exist and to say as to send the message to the user to the particular user we will use another um, object from spring is a simple a simple messaging template private simp messaging template in this uh, this object has a lot of uh, very helpful methods uh, for messaging uh, on, uh, I mean, a client and server and one of uh, one of its method method is uh, just convert and send convert and send and it receives a destination and payload destination would be our enable simple web broker destination prefix okay uh, topic uh, and let's just make some more readable URL let's just add uh, some part of it uh, and call it messages and uh, plus sorry plus two to whom we would send the message and let's just re throw the, the message message oh, sorry message and that's that's all about web sockets uh, that's real it mm. our web sockets would work we can just make uh, to, to make sure with our uh, we, we every, everything we did uh, we did everything correct just let's uh, run a spring boot application and see if it starts okay it didn't start location sorry i didn't stop the previous application. Let's just open one screen, start. Okay. And this time it should start with no errors. Okay. But uh, to make our application, um, to see the res result of our work, we need some uh, m more code. And actually, it would take some time okay let's just create another controller sorry controller and call it users controller because uh, you know to have our users in our user storage we should enable some registration logic just controller and let's call our method Let's call it regist registration, and I I'll do it just with one para user name, okay, public response, response entity. We just uh, we would return only um, HTTP code, no uh, body. Sorry, register path variable. And let's sort some message handling register running. And let's try to save our user in user storage. Get instance, set user, username. And in case um, username is already exist, we receive the exception. And 
in this re uh, for this reason we can just return a badge request response okay response entity badge request build and in case everything is good we just can return um, okay response response entity ok build with empty body and what we need else just one more get method let's call it fetch sorry fetch all users and return all our users string fetch all and that's it about java code and let's restart our uh, web application and next thing we're gonna build is front end part actually um it it's it, it would be better to show you the front end part with some modern te technologies like uh, react or angular or ugs but uh, I'll just write you um, trying uh, this part, uh, trying to show you the simplest model. You know, I, I'll just try to use only JavaScript and jQuery. But uh, you know, you are you are free to use uh, any JavaScript framework or just just simple JavaScript to build a front front end part. It, actually, it doesn't matter because our purpose is just um, to. Um, in this video, just to show you um, Java uh, Java code and to show you how to write web sockets using Java and Spring Boot. Okay, we just write in the front end part to to demonstrate our work. Okay, and to make our lessons more short, I prepared some um, templates. I, I I'll tell you the truth, I didn't uh, write it myself. I just uh, get it from uh, from the internet and you can do uh, the same and on github i'll um, i'll put you a template and put you um javascript templates in order you can uh, in order you can uh, um, try try to make front end yourself okay let's call our new directory front end and let's just copy paste some front-end parts from our project i just have css now copy it let's just copy everything ctrl c and paste it to our project uh, actually we have uh, let's just command c I'll leave you template as well in order you um, in case you would um, would have some um, like uh, in order you want to in case you want to uh, participate in front end part yourself okay just leave you template as well and in index I'll just copy paste code from the template and in our GS script uh, I'll delete everything from the chat we'll just write it from the scratch and in custom gs actually it's not my code i i just found it on the internet it's really a good template uh, for sending the messages i'll show you and uh, how did i find it how did i find it i just uh, entered um, chat chat html template and just went to bootstrap uh, bootsnip.com and just grabbed from one of those templates and when you click you just receive an html and css and if uh, author uh, wrote some js you just have a ga stub you just copy paste it to your project and you have a pretty html templates you don't need to write it yourself okay and what 
I'm gonna do it. I, I just gonna write only um, web uh, WebSocket logic. Okay, let's try to make it simple as possible. And first, the thing we need to create is just our uh, let's call our constant URL URL equals HTTP call host 8080 okay. and uh, actually that's it about constants and mm, let's write our first function connect to chat function connect to chat and let's uh, make some console log um, messages to see if functions works correct connect to uh, con to chat uh, we have uh, this uh, javascript connected to our index.html already i connected them in the end of the page i also connected uh, libraries according stop.js and sock.js uh, these libs are for sock.js client and stop.js client which enables uh, communication uh, our clients um, using stop.js library okay and from this tom.js library we used let socket equals new sock sorry sock gs and uh, this uh, connection would connect to our um, our socket web socket server let's just enter correct url plus and what we have here just need to make sure we connect in correct let's go to our messaging message controller and see we just have chat messaging and let's uh, just um, connect to the chat chat and plus um, user name we get this username from the our method to the method params and uh, actually uh, that's it let's just create stomp client we need to make it global let stomp client and stomp client equals stomp over a socket that means that we would use stomp client over web sockets and after we uh, after we uh, created our stomp client we need to connect to our server stomp client connect and this method accepts some params connect function frame let's just close the methods and let's just console some message connected to plus frame just to make sure uh, that we connect it to our stomp client uh, to our web server and everything works fine and next uh, thing after we subscribed we need to um, after after we connected we need to subscribe to the new messages from the server stomp client subscribe and we subscribing to the topic of messages in the message controller we have topic of messages Let's just um, subscribe okay and i made a mistake we, we need those username on the topic of messages sorry 
class username and uh, we have a function which would receive the response and for now we just console log the response okay let's call it data equals json parse because you know stomp uh, is just a simple messaging protocol it uh, handles only text messaging and we need our json so we just parse our text to the json response body and our data would be uh, would be real json response uh, our uh, our message model so it would have uh, fields like message and from login okay and next thing we're gonna do is just console log console log data to make sure everything works correct sorry and we wrote function connect to chat and uh, next uh, function we need is just send message okay function send a message message and uh, we need to use our stomp client global variable as you remember to send the message send and uh, we need to tell this uh, function um, the destination where we want to send our message it would be app chat message controller chat and two and app we just got from the configuration and destination prefixes our all our destination prefixes starts from the app and our endpoint for the chat is chat okay and we need to send to some user let's just make global variable let and call it for example uh, selected user and make those just concatenation plus selected user and uh, next thing we're gonna pass it's just our um, json value json message json stringify and just message from login sorry login and sorry let's just g get those variables from the method params from text from login would be from and message would be text those fields should be the same as fields in the message model uh, to in order spring um, could uh, parse the uh, part of the object okay just make sure that uh, those uh, fields are the same and that's it that's it or that's all about send message nothing uh, no more logic you just send message to the to, to the server and and that's it okay and to make a sh to allow our users select users from the chat and to write them let's just uh, make those search field as a registration field okay just make some ugly code but that would be much easier to do uh, the registration in those field and either create some other page to for registration okay let's go to the index html find our mm, search field here it is and let's instead of our search button create a button and call it uh, enter the chat and the next button button refresh just refresh we would refresh users in case 
um, users uh, would enter in case users enter the, the chat we just need to refresh them to uh, to to allow them appear in this uh, sidebar okay and we let's add just some id to those input and call it user name and create some more methods in our chat js let's call it function registration and call it function refresh or let's uh, call it um, fetch all okay and we uh, we set on clicks events on buttons on click registration on click ref um, get sorry, fetch all and that's it now we have those ugly buttons sorry control f5 enter the chat and refresh and in, in this field we just should um, paste our username and enter the chat okay let's write uh, the a logic here and what i'm gonna use is just um, simple jquery get uh, method to make a call to the server but first of all let's uh, let's just get the username from the field and let username equals document get element by id user name just make sure that it's the same as in the id property and value and let's just uh, call server to get those users uh, to, to register those user okay url plus registration as far as i remember it calls registration let's just check registration yes uh, username plus username and function response and in case any errors happen we need error detection fail sorry fail function error and let's say uh, that uh, we send error in case we have an exception we have bad request error bad request is just a value 40 uh, for, uh, 400 and let's just check if our error is 400 then that means that user login is uh, is already used and user should uh, select another one okay and if error status 400 then simple alert message uh, log uh, login is our busy and that's enough and in register after we uh, have um, successful registration we need to connect to our chat and let's do it let's call connect chat and we have username that's it and let's write uh, fetch users let's call get method once again i just copy paste it from here uh, i don't need a fail uh, from anymore okay i just need to change some params from here fetch fetch 
users or let's just fetch all users. Let's just copy paste in order to avoid mistakes. And we don't need a path variables in this in this URL. And let's call our users would be response. And what we gonna do in this method? Actually, we need to get part of the of one user. Uh, just get the list of users and um, just copy those parts in this sidebar, but with only with user unique user login. Okay. Uh, I'll just grab uh, the this this is only one user I'll just grab only one user from here another one I'll delete and as you can see let's save and as you can see now all users are gone and let's just build them dynamically according to our server response and let's create variable users users template html and it would be empty variable and i'll write just a simple for each statement for let e from zero users as you can see javascript is very similar to java in the basic stuff i mean and user template html equals user template html plus our html and that's it and Instead of this user login, I'm gonna put just our user login. Users in. Just simple array. And after the, after the for each statement, I need get all those template and inner it to the list okay let's add some id to those list let's call it users list and what i'm gonna do just get list by id it's just simple jquery statement users list and use html method users template html i'm gonna get all those template and inner it to the HTML page. Okay. And let's actually see how it would work. Let's restart our page. Uh, let's restart it. And I'm entering the chat. I'm entering the Ruby class, entering the chat. And let's refresh our page. No, nothing happened. That's actually bad. Let's inspect it from the console. Error failed. Uh, request has been blocked by course policies. Yeah, that's actually because I forgot to add one more annotation cross origin to allow a request from uh, our, our other service, uh, other servers. You know, it's just course policy. Let's refresh our page and enter the chat. As you can see, after we registered it successfully, we connect into the sockets and we subscribe to the destination topic messages and user login. Let's refresh. And what we see here is just our user, which is actually we. And 
let's and um, allow another user to enter sorry just forgot to copy paste the URL control -V. and what if we uh, let's call Java master let's uh, try uh, enter with the login Rubicas. Uh, we just should receive the error that the login is uh, is already used yeah login is already busy let's select another one java master uh, let's enter the chat and call refresh and now we see Rubicas and java master okay that looks looks good and now we need to, to write another method to select the user because we created those variable but we doesn't assign it in our code okay let's create function select user and uh, what I'm gonna do is just um, what I'm gonna do is just select the user how would I select the user I would click those login and that's it I just um, I just want to see chat with login and uh, I should be able to write message only to those user okay and we need to add just one button to the to every user let's I just a link to the old template href or I'll do href as nothing and on click uh, select user so select user sorry select user and when I would click to the button uh, I would go to the select user method but we need to pass our user login to the selected user method to uh, be able to identify our users okay and let's just do it just um, pass the login plus users i plus And that's it. We passed our user login to the selected user user name. Sorry, username. We agreed that we were, that would be username variable. And we can say that those selected user would be username. Selected user username. Let's just console log. So log select user and see what happens. Okay. Control F5. Enter in the chat, refreshing, and let's open our console. Java master, selecting user Java master. Selecting user jar, selecting user Rubicas, and looks good. Uh, on the only thing we need is just change those um, title to make it more informative. And actually, let's delete all those uh, bulky messages. Let's go to our index.html and get rid of those messages one message and another message and that's it chart with user login let's just get it from here and let uh, for example add some id selected user login. I 
I have lack of imagination, so I called it selected user ID. And in our select user, we can um, make those things. We just get our selected user ID by ID selected and pent chat with username that's it but uh, actually we need to clear those um, those uh, element every time we click those button because it would append our message um, every time we click so we need to clear it okay looks good let's try once again let's create some new login refresh chart with Rubicast. oops <laughs> seems doesn't work okay no worries let's just clear it once again let's call html html and see what happens and that should work actually i'm not really good with javascript but i'm doing my best chart with because chart oh looks good okay and now it's time to send our message to the user and we need to let's close others Sorry. and let's go to the custom gs what we have here we just have a render function which renders incoming messages it renders message and username who sent us the message and send message um, function responsible for sending our messages to the user and as you can see here we have our send message to send it to the server but we actually need to send message also method to uh, append our messages to the our chat window and actually send message method in the custom JS are respons is responsible for this functionality and as you can see I just uh, forgot to remove um, those send message call uh, after we send a uh, click button we send in message we append in message um, message to our uh, chat window and in this time we firstly send our message to the server we just called we just call send message method send msg method and we pass our username and we pass our message and that's it uh, we we already have um, a functionality to to send a message uh, message and to render the message we need to call those method in our subscribe uh, under our subscribe function to um, get incoming message and render it uh, when it uh, when it, it comes to us okay just call render render and what we we need uh, to paste message and username okay data text data from user sorry i, I forgot our fields let's refresh message model message and from login okay data message and from login and that actually it but uh, in this case we uh, will be able only to um, communicate between two users and uh, let's just check if it if it works okay let's just refresh our page and first user would be 
Ruby Casa. And uh, let's open our console to see the debug mode. And the next user would be Java Master. Master. Enter in the chat and Ruby Casa is already in chat. Actually, you can modify those functionality to uh, you can connect another socket uh, to make this uh, user appearance dynamically when some somebody enters the chart it should he should just depend to the list of users and when some somebody um, removes from the chart um, he should disappear disappear from this uh, list as well okay we have our users uh, and let's Let's try to communicate. Uh, what if Robicasa wants to write Java Master? We are chatting with Java Master. Let's write hi Java Master. And we sent our message from Java from um, Robicasa to Java Master. And let's go to Java Master. And here we go. We have our hi Java Master from Robicasa. Okay. What if Java Master wants to um, respond to Ruby Casa? Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. And here we have Java Master. Hi, Ruby. And in our console, we have handling message uh, console, uh, logs. Okay. But what if we want to communicate with different users? Uh, let's just write some more functionality uh, to make our chart more um, more suitable. You know, to give him some more uh, more features. And first thing we need is just to create a map which would store new messages from users. New messages equals new map and uh, we need to identify all the users um, we will do it by um, adding unique ID to all the users in this list we just uh, add some ID name and um, just depend user login username to the to those id name okay that's maybe not the best solution but uh, but uh, at least it it works and at least it it's it's easy and it's it's quick to demonstrate you the purpose of uh, of the web sockets okay but you are aware to use any technology any different end te technology you want okay let's just go to our user um, fe fetch all and Get those ID, the, get those user user login, unique ID. For example, user name appender. Let's underscore, and we are gonna get user. I, I repeat that that's a really bad way to write the code, but it's only for tutorial purposes, okay? But that's it. Now, uh, our users uh, would have the unique um, ID, uh, user's name, appender, and user login. And now we can um, append to those username a new message sign. And what if we instead of um, render, we just uh, we will check if user is new or he's um, just the same user as um, actually selected by uh, by by client. If selected user, it's our select user equals data from login. Then we ran, we just render in as well. But if um, we got a message from from new user from a user we didn't select, 
else we need to append a new message from this user with his login okay let's just I'll better to demonstrate you instead of talking new messages we need set data from login data message uh, this map needs uh, to make sure our last messages won't disappear. We just store um, the last, uh, the new messages from new users in those map. Data new message, and under the user name, we need to append him some more signs. User name. Appender plus data from login, and we just append him mm, some plus uh, plus one message. I I don't I will not search for some pretty icons for new messages just to demonstrate you the point of view. Span plus one, plus one, and let's make it color red style red, and and that's it uh, for for now. That's it for now. We just go to our web client. Refresh the page, enter in the chat, refresh the users, and go to the next page, refreshing the page, enter in the chat, refreshing, and what if our SDF user writes to end user, in end user, for end user it's new uh, user, because it's it uh, end user didn't select the SDF user, so let's just write to end user. Hi. We wrote the message, and here we have plus sign plus one sign um, with the SDF login page. Yeah, we don't have the message in our chat yet because. Uh, SDF is new user, and if we click, nothing would happen because we didn't, we haven't uh, written the functionality yet. And let's let's just make some more changes. Let's um, get those spawn ID, you know, message underscore plus mm, data from login plus okay to identify every um, every new message id and in the select user uh, we need to um, check if user is new or not and if he is new uh, just to uh, remove the plus sign from its login and to show his messages. Okay, and let's just select let is new equals document get element sorry and get get element by id and new message underscore plus login uh, sorry username username we just need to check if those id uh, if those spawn exists okay uh, because uh, when we select user we can select it uh, with two reasons we want to write those users user and we received a message from the user so we need to check if this is it's a new message or if we just writing uh, if we just uh, initiating the 
chart okay and let's continue user name and if it's not no sorry if it's not no then we just need to um, remove plus sign okay we, when, when we click to the user when you click to the new messages those plus signs should uh, should disappear on that element equals uh, document get element by id uh, new message plus uh, sorry username and ln element parent not this is pure javascript but you can mm, use and um, jquery for example use child element uh, remove child element and we are removing the child and we need to display the message from new user okay we just need to call render function and uh, we need to get those message new message from new messages map because it would um, new message map um, stores our new messages okay I'll just get new messages um, and get username and the next param would be um, login. Sorry, username. And that's it. Uh, let's see what happened. Okay, let, let's just um, restart our application server to clear our user storage. And let's see what happens. Control F5. Let's be or because enter in the chat and let's, for example, Java Master enter in the chat and let's refresh and let's refresh. And what if Robicos wants to write Java Master? Hi, and it's good. And under um, beside the Robicos appeared plus sign. We just click plus sign, plus sign disappeared, and we received a message from Robicos. And we just can uh, write to Robicos there, okay. And as Robicos has already selected the Java master, the message doesn't appear and just renders uh, in the chat as well and let's assume that uh, there are some more users in our chat let's uh, copy paste url and let's call it name and what if uh, for example name uh, wants to write to Robicos, for example. What if name wants to write for Robicos? It just select Robicos and sends him hi, Robby. And Robicos receives those message under the name. But, you know, he can avoid those name he can just continue messaging with java master how are you 
and message would go to Java master, not to Ruby, uh, not to name. It's our Java master. Let's refresh users. And you know, just name won't uh, see the messages. Okay. And let's answer to the uh, name. Oh, just messed up with those. Okay, we just select name and we have a message from name. You know, our chart is pretty primitive because we need to re-enter the window and uh, append message from new um, um, user to the new window, but let's call it it's our new unique um, develop, you know, <laughs> just to make it simple. And now we chat in with name, but we can continue with, we just read the, the name from, um, this message from name and we can just leave it, uh, without response. We just can continue with Java master. We just select Java master and we send message to Java master. And again, name wouldn't receive any message, uh, from the Rubicas, but, uh, Java master receives. And what if we want to um, answer the name? Okay. Hi. The name finally receives his response from Robicast. And Java master can um, just write message to Robicast. And in Robicast, Belong beside the Java master would appear plus sign. Okay. That's pretty much of it. What I wanted to show you today. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can just, I'll push that code to the GitHub and you can just play around it and maybe you can create some efficient solution. But uh, that's actually it. You, as you can see, um, According to Java, it's not a, a lot of, um, it's a small piece of code, you know, you don't have to do a lot to write web sockets using Java. Okay. That's it. Bye.